Greetings, friends. I'm Dr. Naufel from Conceptual Orthopedics. And uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, the most commonest symptom that the patient comes to us, that is pain. So we have uh, Professor S.M. Tulisar with us. So, sir, we'll be discussing about this common symptom that comes to us. And we'll be discussing what are the types of pain that usually these patients come to us. So without uh, wasting much time, I welcome Professor S.M. Tulisar on board. sir. Over to you, sir. It's nice to address the young generation of orthopedic fraternity. It is absolutely true. Why does a patient visit an orthopedic service? He visits the orthopedic service in addition to trauma or fractures and dislocation for pain in the body. Where is the pain? The pain can be present in any part of the body. The commonest, one of the commonest pain for which a patient visits the orthopedic service is a backache. We will come to it within a few minutes. The, the, the pain in any part of the body may be generally associated with stiffness of that part, limitation of movements of that joint, and one should, one should know how to deal with a patient with pain. Obviously, we must follow the rules given to us by orthopedic forefathers. They told us, observe the following clinical features. One, one, listen, look, feel, move, measure, there's a list just given just to remind us listen, look, feel move, measure and compare when we talk of comparison we compare with the opposite normal size as a rule you'll find that the opposite size is normal similarly in very early cases or very minor injuries if an x-ray is needed again we ask for a comparative x-ray X-ray of both the wrists together, X-ray of both the ankles together, X-ray of both the knees, both the hips together. Shoulder is one area where probably good comparative X-rays are not available. So this is how we go. Listen to the patient. It is true that sometimes the patient's description may not be perfect, but you can always make some specific questions. Did you have pain before this trauma? Did you have this pain, similar pain earlier? Does this pain bother you throughout the day? And that is what's called time relationship of pain. There are certain pains which are most in the morning. And then with the passage of time, the pain subsides. This is typical of rheumatoid inflammatory pains. There are some pains which are more at night. They have pain during the daytime, but the pain is much more at night. Especially this happens in active infective lesions. During the day, the active infective area is supported by the related spasm in the muscles. The movements are minimized. When the patient sleeps, the muscles get relaxed the infected or irritant area, they start rubbing against each other and that is what you call more pain at night, many a time addressed as night cries. Night cries is typical of pain in infective condition. There are certain other, not common, but rare conditions like osteodostoma is a tumorous condition which causes pain predominantly at night. Similarly, another rare condition, Pager's disease, again causes pain more at night. There are certain pains which occur throughout the day. And let's say, for example, degenerative conditions. Degenerative means osteoarthrosis, especially of the weight-bearing joints, knee, hip, ankle. The osteoarthrosis may be primary due to age or can be secondary. So any osteoarthrosis of these major joints will cause pain the moment you stand and walk, which means the pain is there during the day, during the evening, during the night on loading. 
This is what to say, time relationship of pain and time relationship of pain also guides us towards the possible diagnosis. And if the pain has occurred after injury, again, it is true that we are talking today non-traumatic pain, but still just as a guideline, day after injury, it can be a soft tissue injury which can give rise to pain, which would show you a local edema or a hematoma. It can be an injury to the joint which can give rise to pain. Generally, these joints will have hemarthrosis and a fluid collection in the joint. And of course, if it is a fracture, it is obvious the pain is in the bone. Movements per, do not permit. Do not permit because any movement of the fracture will cause pain and there will be a deformity. Certain pains have typical characters. Any pain related to neurological elements, let's say brachial plexus. So I think uh, uh, so the diseases and the related pain. So that is also very important. So infection, so it can be a throbbing type of a pain that the patient is having. Inflammation can be associated with stiffness. The patient might be telling that uh, it, it is time bound. Like when I give rest to my uh, fingers or rest to my body, I feel more stiff and painful. So these patients usually have a lot of morning pain. Uh, when they are sleeping or when they are exposed to a cold environment, they might have more amount of pain. So it is time bound and it is uh, uh, environment bound and uh, the pain is totally different in case of inflammation as well as infection. So arthritis, it might be a dull aching pain. We have told about rheumatic disorder also. It is mainly time bound and the metabolic cases also, sir, has already mentioned what is the type of pain. Initially, it might be a dull aching type of a pain, but once it fractures, it might be much more excruciating type of pain. Tumors, usually uh, throughout the day, the patient might have some conditions like uh, osteoid osteoma might have pain towards the uh, night because there is more amount of prostaglandins that are secreted there and the pain might be increased. Neurological disorders, again, it will be a shooting type of pain associated with tingling, associated with numbness, all those things. Injury, so acute injury, like sir has already mentioned, a hematoma or a contusion that is over there causing pain. Whereas if it leads to some mechanical derangement over there or an instability and that leading to arthritis, then again, it can go to this particular variety in which the patient might have a dull aching sort of pain. We were talking about tumors, you see. <clears throat> almost all benign tumors of bones and joints are painless unless they become too big and interfere with the neighboring joints mechanical function whereas almost all malignant tumors are painful in the initial stages the pain would be less but as the tumor grows the pain becomes severe and constant the benign tumors like osteochondroma or chondroma, osteoma, exostosis, they are practically painless. A deep pressure or a forceful pressure may cause some discomfort, but otherwise they are painless. One should keep that in mind. A malignant tumor has a constant pain, sometimes less, sometimes more, very severe pain when you press them or Push, put a pressure on them. So this must be kept in mind. Now, what do we mean by water? Water means fluid. Urine is fluid. Edema is fluid. A collection of fluid or blood in the joint is a fluid. So wherever you'll find fluid, it will look whitish. In T2, it will look blackish in T1. Here is, you are seeing an MRI of the spine, the MRI on your left hand is T1 image. Look at that dural tube. It contains a black column. And on the right side, you at the dural tube. It is white. So whereas, this is what shows you. T2, water white. And if it is water, in T1, it should become black. Similarly, you are seeing some tissue behind the spine that is whitish. See, almost in the lower part of the spine in this picture. 
So it is white both in T1 as well as in T2. Why it is white in both? Because this is fat. This is where we learn. And look at the disc. Most of the disc in this particular patient are black. If they are black, which means they are already dried up. Yeah, black means it dried up, it has become scar. Some of the discs still are not dried up. They still have the gelatinous material in it. That is why they look black in T1 and white in T2 shadows. Let's go ahead. So I hope everyone has understood how to see an MRI. What are the various uh, types of uh, MRI that you get? What are the various uh, uh, cut sections that you have, you have to look on to MRI? So uh, that was about MRI. So sir has collected a few x-rays as well. So we'll start discussing about that. So this is a cervical spine x-ray, again, lateral view. I think it is uh, x-rays of two uh, patients. So you can so you can just zoom and about. We are looking at this x-ray again. But if our neurons know what we are looking at, your eyes will see it very easily. Look at in front of the vertebral cord. It's a cervical spine, obviously. 